Yes. Okay. Okay. Is there a certain place around Buck Sledge that you have a connection with? Uh, well, speaking of Buck Sledge, uh, back when I was young, uh, Buck Sledge was called Buck, not with a plural S on it anyway. And uh, I was born right across from Buck Sledge. And I have a picture that of when I was born and I was born in a tent, as you will notice, and because uh, 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 I, I was born from a Native American family. And so uh, what we used to do was uh, uh, travel to Buckledge a lot. And uh, this is how it first got started. So, can you hold that picture up a little higher, Bunker? I don't think we were able to see it yeah. in the video. I think we'd really love to see that picture. So you were born in a tent? I was born in a tent. That's and impressive. <laughs> That's that, that, is, that is my mother holding me. Oh, That's so cute. Okay. And that uh, my aunt is with me there and my grandfather. Wow. My grandfather is a uh, Shark Alexis Newell. He's a Penobscot Indian. I learned about that last year in middle school. Well, I'm still in middle school, but in seventh grade. I learned about the Penobscot. Yeah, I learned about that. Um, do you have any history stories to share about Buck Sledge? Was that tent in Buck Sledge? Well, I used to travel to Buck Sledge a lot because we lived right across the lake there. We went down the road and I used to go in and that was probably my uh, playground because uh, there wasn't much to do back then. And uh, I used to go over there and uh, we used to pick berries and uh, stuff like that, checker berries for one thing, and bunch berries or box berries. People don't think they're good for you, but they are. And and of course I traveled the uh, more or less like the Native American way and learned a lot of the words. And I even used to climb up on Buck Ledge and uh, I used to hunt over there. And uh, as time went on that, uh, that was one of my favorite places. That's a very interesting. So you used to go to Buck Sledge and climb up and it was, it was your playground, correct? Well, I called it my playground all over there because I just wandering through the woods. That's what we did. We they had nothing more to do than to just wander around and uh, look at all the uh, sites and different plants and trees. In fact, uh, with that picture that I showed you, if you notice the rustic furniture on it was made of cedar. And my grandfather used to go there and I'd go help him and we'd bring the cedar home and uh, he would uh, make the chairs. This was later on because he used to do it before, but uh, I, as I got older, I helped him do that. That, that's, a, that, this is really interesting. I, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I am enjoying this. Okay. What are other ways you connect with nature? Well, uh, mostly I, uh, I make a lot of stuff out of nature. Like uh, I have uh, uh, bird houses made out of uh, birch, bird houses, feeders. And uh, this is one here that uh, I made. I, I started making these when I was 16 years old. 
and I make I started stop making them probably about two years ago, and uh, but I have several other items, and I got a there's a picture there of stuff that I made with crafts, and then 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 there's this one here. Which shows you of uh, if I hold it high enough, can you see it? Yep, we can see it. Yeah. So this is this is some of my things that I made out of nature, and uh, of course it's several things that that I don't have to show, and uh, but uh, I I just like to make stuff. That's all. That's super cool. So you started it when you were six, when you started making those at 16. Yes, when I was 16. And uh, I've, I've been making them right up to now and uh, I'm 91 now. Wow, so you've been doing this for a while then. Oh yes, <laughs> quite a while. <laughs> okay. In our project, we choose, we choose certain questions to explain and we want to know how, oh wait, am I, I, I'm sorry, it's jumbled up, okay. We have questions that we discuss at the beginning of our community art classes and then we work towards succeeding and answering that question. And we would like to know your answer on, this, on these two questions. How can we project perseverance and or improve our outdoor environment? Well, uh, that's, that's, that's a good question. It's, uh, one of the main things, I guess, is to uh, uh, stop throwing away trash, so much trash along the roadways and stuff and try to uh, help people maintain the lakes, ponds, rivers, whatever, and uh, not uh, uh, throw so much trash in the woods. That is that is a good way to improve our outdoor environment. How can we help create an environment that supports mental health and civil rights? Well. I, I don't know if I'm up on that too much, but uh, I really, that's kind of a hard one for me to answer because I just don't quite know what, what you mean by it. I think I can explain in a different way. <clears throat> um, sometimes we would say, what are some things we can do to be more respectful of everybody? So from your perspective, if there are things that you feel like we could learn from in order to just create a safe, respectful and welcoming environment for everybody. Well, the most thing is to treat everybody equal. No, and uh, you know, not, not, not uh, push people aside and uh, make sure that uh, they're getting uh, along good with each other and make sure people are happy. Also, another follow-up question about your arts and crafts is, how did you make them? Like, what are they made out of? And what, yeah. Well, the, uh, the bird houses are made out of white birch slab wood and the uh, uh, trimming on them is made out of moose wood. And the uh, moose wood, uh, you have to go in the woods and uh, cut it. And it, it, it is a wood that is uh, called trash wood because it only grows up so big and then it dies out. So you can use that and not bother any of the other species of wood in the, that you're after. So did you go into the woods and did you cut them yourself? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I, I did. I, I, have to, I have to go haul it out. I shoulder it out 
wintertime, I'd have to put on my snowshoes and wait through the snow. I'd fall down, get up and go. No, it's one of those happy days. I'm glad that being around nature makes you very happy. Is there anything that you enjoy doing to help help or protect our environment? Well, right now there's uh, not not much I can do. I'm, I'm I stay at home most of the time now because I, I I'm bothered with the uh, knee problems and back problems. So I've just uh, probably gone by the wayside for a while. My cat has decided to say hello. Hi, cat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there anything that you used to do? Is there anything that you used to do to help the environment? Well, I don't know. I just uh, practice every day what I do, and I, I don't think that I harm the environment because I. I, I, like I say, I stay at home or I go out and I tend, tend to my gardens and best I can and with help. So uh, there's not much I can do. Maybe years ago, I did more, but not, not recently. Do, could you tell us about your gardens? Well, I don't plant too big of a garden. I, I planted cucumbers and tomatoes and, and uh, uh, last year I planted some pumpkins for the kids. So, and uh, like that, but I always, I do have quite a big flower garden which my granddaughter takes care of. And uh, my granddaughter, Ma Amanda, and uh, she does a good job and she sees that I have plenty of flowers around my house. And, and uh, I have to have water them a lot. I know that. Jeez. I'm very sorry. My sister was about to come into the bedroom. What do you think about creating a buck sledge community forest? Uh, right now, they've uh, buck sledge is being, uh, I think, is being purchased by the town of Woodstock, and they have trails up there now, and they even have one that goes to the Crescent Park School, and uh, up to uh, buck sledge and the back side's called Lapham Ledge, so. Um, I think that they've got people that are uh, building trails and stuff like that so people can enjoy it. Do you like the idea of creating a community forest? What's that again? Do you like the idea of creating a community forest? Oh, yes. Yes, people, as more people enjoy themselves. And they're respectful. I guess what they're doing up there, they're very respectful to the environment and the woods. It's up there. And they, they're teaching a lot of different things for younger people to do, to go up there and... and uh, try and create different things, I believe. What are some tips that you have to be respectful to the woods? Well, only, only use what, uh, like myself, I use stuff out of the woods that is no longer good 
and like the moose wood is stuff like I say it grows up and dies out so I can use that for a thing and uh because I, I, I do have the right to go and cut anything I want to, but I don't. I don't cut anything down that it's not useful. So you only, t you, you're saying that you should only take what you need from the forest? That's right, correct. Okay. I don't have any further further more questions. I would like to thank you so much for your time. It was very nice hearing your side of, of the project and about your family. And it was very interesting how you were born in a tent. That's probably the thing that most surprised me. It was, it's really interesting. And I, and I love how you um, respect the forest and you, and you only use what you need. And I and the and that birdhouse that you showed us is really pretty. How long did that take you? What, what's that again? How how long did it take you to make the birdhouse? Oh, it it's hard to tell, and a lot of people ask me that. But uh, what I do is I cut out so many pieces, and then I put them together. And uh, by doing that, I, I, I've sold thousands and thousands and thousands of them anyway. So it's, uh, uh, I don't know, over, over the lifetime, I, I don't know how many I've made. I used to make a hundred a week at one time and they, I sold them. At, and uh, one of the places that I used to sell them to is uh, Mainline Products in Bethel. And, uh, but, uh, they kind of took over and they they took my work away from me and uh, making their own now. They copied my patterns, so. Yeah. That's not nice. Well, uh, they may think it's all right, but <laughs> there's nothing you can do unless you unless you have a an item patented. But this has all been in the family anyway, because my grandfather grandfather really started it and he uh he made them of course out of uh, uh ash and uh pine hemlock all kinds of different wood but i was the only one that i can remember that started making them out of white birch is the craft you are doing is the craft that you are doing, is it, I don't know how to word this, is the craft, is making these birdhouses a traditional craft from your Pranabstock family? Pranab, I'm so sorry. It's Penobscot, yeah. Penobscot. Yes, yes you're, you're, it's true. Yeah, it's a, it's one of those things that, uh, uh, I suppose because um, it was in the family that was uh, all of these things were created by each and every one of us. Do you have any further more stories or any more crafts that you would like to show us or share with us? Uh, I don't, I didn't bring a craft with me. Uh, that uh, I just uh, started making because they, uh, I am still making a few things, but the one I'm making right now is the, uh, it's a wooden uh, rustic basket that they put flowers in for cemeteries and for Christmas and stuff like that. And uh, I've just got a order for that. And uh, I'm trying to get it done so they can have it for Memorial, so. I know you can get it done. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any more traditions that you would like to share with us? Well, I don't know of any more traditions. I, I, I more or less keep to myself. 
I, uh, I, I don't, I don't travel much. I'm a home buddy for one thing, I guess you'd call it. So, but I got my family, my family keeps me going. You, cause you probably know uh, uh, most of my family belongs here at school because Heather, you know, Heather Jordan, Amanda Jordan Ames, Tiffany Jordan. And th those are all my granddaughters. And, oh, that's right. Speaking of those three, every one of them, uh, that they run, they won the uh, uh, Molly Orchid Day Queen in, during the years. Every one of them became the Queen. And I think it probably is because they wrote about their ancestors, you know, but about me and my grandfather and stuff like that. So that 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 was pretty good. What do you love about where you live? Oh, I don't know, just peaceful, quiet. And uh, it's, 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 it's a good place. It's, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those places where, well, I've lived there, let's see. I've lived there for 70, 70 years in the same house where I am now. So it's got to be pretty good. I probably want to live there that long. <laughs> <laughs> what was changed during the time you have lived here? Has anything changed along the time period that you lived here? I think we lost your audio for a second, Bunker. Are you still there? Maybe. Hopefully. I think you guys are frozen. This is Zoom. It is, it is Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we got it back. Yeah, something happened. I guess I scared it or something. <laughs> Okay, so I think you, you might want to repeat your last question, Blakely. I'm not sure if it came through. What has changed over the period of time that you lived here? What has changed? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. I, I don't know too much has changed lately. Uh, um, oh. oh, the phone. Yes, we had the old telephone. Yeah, the old ring down phone. It's one of the last ones in the country. And that that has changed. So we used to be able to just take and ring a handle on that and call somebody up and like that. But now, now you have to uh, push buttons. But this? No, that 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 no, I don't even know that guy. I don't even have one of those. <laughs> I, <laughs> And my, my, I'm talking about the ring down. Remember the old, I think it's one right there. I can show you one. Yes, that would be greatly appreciated because I don't really know what that is. Yeah, well, Heather's getting it for me, so it'll take a few minutes. It's heavy. It's very heavy. I can hold it up. Yeah. Yeah, you see, that's this way. They used to ring in the number and the phone, the phone was this like this. And then you pick it up and you tell them you want John Henry or somebody like that. And they get it for you. They have a switchboard. That, that was changed. You probably have never seen one. No, I've never seen one. <laughs> <laughs> in the old in the old high school that I used to attend, that's gone. There's no more. We because they got Telsa and uh, old Woodstock High School, that's where I went. And uh, is it that broke down wooden building that's like at a dead end? It what? 
Where was Wood, where is Woodstock High School? Oh, yeah. Woodstock, Wood, Wood, Woodstock High School is over where the town uh, garage is right now. Well, the the sand shed and the town office and everything is over there, and everything's gone. The only building left uh, that they built for industrial arts is the town office now, but the rest of it is where the school and the gymnasium used to be. Because we used to we used to play sports way back then. <laughs> what was what was your favorite part of being in Woodstock High School? Oh, sports. What sports bat, did you do? Bat, basketball, baseball, football, anything, anything with a ball on it, I was after it. <laughs> That's really interesting. What was your, what, which, which ball game did you enjoy the most? Well, probably baseball, because I, I played a long time afterwards, because they used to have the uh, called the Pine Tree League, and I, I used to play in several teams there. We played all summer long, and and uh, like that, we I, I played for several different teams. I I used to be a catcher, and if they needed a catcher on another team, and my my team wasn't playing, I'd go play for the other team. So, but years ago, we had a lot, a lot of baseball teams in this area. Okay. Also, what has stayed the same? Like, what hasn't changed at all? Oh, I I don't know. I guess there isn't there isn't there isn't much that, uh, that that's changed lately. So they are building the uh, they resurfacing and rebuilding the whole road through Bryant Pond Village, and uh, that's starting right up where I live right just above me and it's going all the way up through up to um, North Pond. And so that's going to be there for, I don't know, all the rest of the year. They started last year and, and uh, right now, so we're supposed to have a super highway. <laughs> Can you see Buck's Ledge from your house? Not from my house, no. No, I live in Woodstock in the lower end of town. And, and uh, Buck Ledge is up, well, you can see it better from the road in Greenwood. Because that's where my tent, that's where I was born, my tent was on the shores of North Pond looking at Buck Ledge. But it doesn't, it doesn't take too long for me to get up there if I wanted to. So, when you were born, could you see Buck Sledge? Could I what? See Buck Sledge. Oh, yeah. Well, no, not when I was born. Probably after a few years I did. But uh, yeah, I, no, yeah, because I, well, I, I used to climb Buck Sledge. I'd go, I'd go down the road and go up in the woods and, and, uh, because, I mean, uh, people wonder why I wandered in the woods and nobody was with me. Well, we didn't have, we didn't have anything uh, for people to play with or anything back then. Right? We, <laughs> we, we just took it on our own. That's why I used to wander up there. And one time I pretty near fell off too. And uh, a, a, a small pine growth, I grabbed onto who saved me. So I I don't know. I was in my I was a teenager probably. <laughs> um how long have you lived on how long have you lived on North North Pond? Oh no, I I lived there until I was uh uh married. And I was uh, probably I lived there till I was about nineteen or twenty. And then I then I married my high school sweetheart. And moved. Yeah. What what was what was her name? Her name was Bessie Dunham, but I always I always referred to her as my uh, as my uh, uh, well, being an Indian, I I always thought she 
she was my uh, uh, pilgrim. I called her pilgrim. We had a joke about it all the time. So I, I talked to anybody. I said, well, I said, yeah, well, my, me and my pilgrim will be there sometime. So yeah, we were married. We were lacking, lacking one month of 69 years. So you were married to her for 36 years? No, lack in one month of being 69 years. 69, yeah. A question popped up in my head a while ago and I am trying to, I, I, have, I can't remember what it is. Oh, right. Okay, there it is. Do you do any other hobbies besides build birdhouses? Do I do any hobbies? Uh, well, gee, I don't know if I call hobbies or not. I I got a little I got a little uh, electric uh, three wheel bike that I ride around a lot on. I take ride out and feed my birds with it. I got a little basket on the end that they bought me my uh, children, grandchildren, and everybody, they all bought me this thing. And uh, it, it's fun. I mean, I can get around a lot better with that. Otherwise, I have to use a cane and or a walker or something like that. So I, I feed my birds with it, take them right around the house. But other than that, I don't know if I get any other hobbies. Okay. Okay. You must be good at relationships if you've been married for so long. Do you have any advice of keeping a good relationship? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Just be good and be friendly and love the person you marry. <laughs> if we have a wheelchair accessible on the trail at Buck, at, at Buck Sledge, would you go? A wheelchair? Mm -hmm. If we, uh, if we... I, I, yeah, I suppose I could, but I don't know if I could drive it. Somebody have pushed me, and then they probably push me off over the edge of it. So <laughs> I don't know whether that'd be safe or not. <laughs> okay. I have. I okay. Okay. Blakely, you're doing great. Um, we are we are about half an hour in. We have all the time in the world. We could also be done whenever you'd like. If you have more questions, Blakely, you can ask them. Bunker, if you have any other things you have like brought with you that you want to share, feel free to share and we can keep going or we can, you know, be done whenever works. No. <clears throat> well, I I, uh, I don't know as I know of anything. It's just that, you know, I tried to answer everything I could think of and, and uh, hope, hope she, she's satisfied with the answers she's got. Yes. I, know, I know it's kind of confusing, but some of the things I told you about the telephone and about being born in the tent, I know, I know that, but uh, yeah, you, you must know Mr. Murphy, don't you? Uh, tell us, uh, you, do you have any contact with Mr. Murphy at all? Now he's the, uh, what, what, he's a superintendent. Mr. Murphy, I've heard that name. We don't even know him, but <laughs> well, that's off of it. He knows, <laughs> he knows all about me living in a tent because he always mentions it to me when I, whenever he sees me, if we go to, I had to go to one of those senior citizen dinners up there they put on and he always comes over, he says, I've seen your picture of you in the tent. And he always has to mention it every year I go. So he knows about it. <laughs> I am satisfied with my answers. I didn't even know that a phone like that existed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And... Uh these okay. new ones, these new ones, they don't exist for me. I, I have a landline. You know what a landline is? 
No, of course not, because you've got that little <laughs> one you hold in your hand. <laughs> a landline is a regular one that, you know, it's just like that, just like the old phone, with the exception that it's, you know, you could, it rings and tells you the number, who's calling, and because I get sick of all these uh, scam calls, and I'm getting them for you, am I getting them? Yeah. Yeah. I get those sometimes, and then I'm... Just, yeah. Why? Just, I'm like, why? Just be careful of them. Yeah, I was told if I get scam call, just hang up immediately. There right, right. <laughs> um, I am petting I, my cat. I'm petting my cat, and she sheds a lot, and there's like hair all over my face. Well, you, you better save the hair, and then you can make a pillow out of it. I could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any pets? No, I used to. I've had several dogs and I've had, well, I got pets now because the family has them. The, uh, uh, I've got uh, granddaughters that got dogs and cats and like that. So I, I've got them around. In fact, <laughs> I had one I was down here just a while ago I was playing with. Does, do they have a name? Oh yeah, Beanie. Beanie's the one I just had. She's she's a new one. She she came from the uh, the uh, Amish. Uh, Amish. She came from the Amish family, and my uh, well, it belongs to my granddaughter Tiffany. So uh, she she they she picked her up down the Amish country in Pennsylvania, I guess. So. How long has your family lived in the area? Oh, How long have you, has your family lived in this area? Oh, God. Well, since I was 20 years, well, 70 years. I have. I was 70 years, and now the rest of the night, yeah. uh, the, uh, my son and uh, his wife and family, they, they bought the uh, great grandfather place they they live up on summit street and uh the rest of the family some most of them well tiffany lives out in in pinhook called pinhook and the rest of them live over here not too far from me they live out here on rumford avenue road so uh i got a son that lives in auburn and uh he's a musician he's he's one of the greatest piano players there is around and uh, he, he can't be beat I don't think but and uh, and the others in South Paris and Oxford all, all close by in the area did your parents live here with that did your parents live here oh yes yeah they well it's where I was born in the tent yeah My cat is just sprawled out of the lap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you could, if you could, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Hawaii. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I, I just, I just like to go to Hawaii or Alaska, either one of those places. Yeah. Oh, is it is Hawaii because of the heat? Well, I don't know. It's just I don't know. It seems so. It's a uh, easy going place that people seem happy there and everything. Maybe they're not, but it just seems that way to me. <laughs> In Alaska, I love to go to Alaska because they know a lot of fishing up there too. You like fishing? Oh yeah, fishing and hunting. You know, that is something that I did not ask about, and now I would I. <laughs> now I know. There you go. Yeah. I am being so awkward right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that's okay. Hey. Okay. You, you're doing great. I just want to say you're doing fantastic. This is great. 
and lots of fun to watch. You keep going and you know, that's fine. I'm, I'm here. Go for it. <laughs> What's your favorite drink? My favorite drink? Oh <laughs> boy. Ah. Uh... I know I shouldn't be drinking it, but I I like a uh, well Pepsi is all right. I like Mountain Dew. Yeah. What's your favorite food? No, oh, oh lobster. <laughs> yeah. Actually, wait. Okay, I was trying to remember a time that I ate lobster. It it tasted pretty good. <laughs> oh, it's good. Do you prefer? Um, do you do you like sushi? Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite sushi roll? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I. I really don't know. Do you have any ways that we could get you to come to Buck Sledge? Wait, what would what what would have to happen for you to come to Buck Sledge? What would have to happen? Well, not much. I just can't walk. I can't walk, but I have yeah, you know, yeah, I walk, but I have to use a cane and I can only go so far and then I have to stop and go so far and stop. It's uh it's one of those. What's one of those things when you get so damn old you can't even move? You know, and it's. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I've because uh, beside the road where they enter the Buck Blade, you know, is a, there's a parking area and there's a lot of people cars there. When you go by, there's a lot of people using it now. They they really are. They're really enjoying that. So I mean. I don't know if I could get up Buck Ledge or not. Maybe if I maybe if I had a four wheeler, I could get up there or something. I don't know. Well, I don't have any further more questions, but if you have questions for me, feel free to ask. You no, know, I I think you I think for I think you've done a good job, and you've had me stumped sometimes. Anyway, I didn't know how to answer, this, but. <laughs> But you've done you've done a good job. I have to agree, Blakely. This is great, and our goal is just to have a great conversation. And um, these kind of conversations are part of the history of this area, and we want to be able to record it and keep it. And so, you know, we are helping to record our own history as we go here. So. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say thank you so much, Bunker, for coming, and thank you, Blakely, for being our interviewer today. And I'm going to stop the recording now so okay. that we know we're done with that part. And then we can talk about whatever you want to talk about after that. Okay. okay. Recording is over. Okay.